Okay, we're hi there again. We're halfway there. So what we're going to start doing something interesting now. So we're going to be learning about repeating ourselves. Now, Grok Learning's had a little bit of an overhaul. You might notice a bit of difference. We now have these down the page instead of across the page, and we can now have a look at exactly where we're up to. So everything else is pretty much the same. We read stuff on these, and we do stuff on those. So we look at um, how we can simplify things. Like as a computer programmer, pretty lazy. So if I can write something once and repeat it a million times, I'm going to do that instead of writing it a million times. So copy and paste. Let's not do that unless we really have to. Um, we're going to learn about loops. So here, we have a look at this, name equals input your name, and then we're breaking it into um, a sequence of characters, and it's going to go first character, second, third, fourth. What if I put Bob? It's going to go three, and then it's going to go, oh, we've got an error. So let's just saying we um, have gone outside of the range. So the range should have been 0, 1, 2, B, O, B, but we tried to go past it. And this is, protects you from a lot of... Um, malicious code that tries to inject um, executable stuff after you go through that really common um, injection attack or really common vector for attacks early on was um, buffers out of range and all that sort of stuff. So um, languages protect from that. So we're going to look at some looping over strings. So we use the for loop. So we have our name, same sort of thing. We go for character in name, and I'm going to print the character. What that does is for each element, for each bit of a name or this variable has to be something like a list or an array, and it runs through. So it's going to run it sort of the length of name times. So it's just going to go B O B. So let's check that. Enter your name. What's your name? Fred. F R E D. Uh, timer going off, so that's right. So um, it will do it that many times. So an acrostic is a type of poem where each line starts with the name of or fra letter of name or phrase. We're going to write a program which asks for your name and prints out a template for you to fill in with an acrostic. For example, what is your name? Sammy. S is for, and then if you printed that out, you could fill that in and you could have a nice little thing like that. So how would we do this? Now this is really easy because we know how to go name. We've done this before. Name equals input. What is your name? Question mark space. And make sure we finish that off. <coughs> and then we're just going to use the for loop. We saw the for character in name. Really easy. Colon. It's indented and we're just going to print. Um, okay. So if we have a look at this, this is upper case, so we have to go dot upper. That's a function to convert to upper. And then we're going to add a string to it is for and a colon. And that should do it. What is your name? Sammy. All right. And just double checking <coughs> that it's correct. What is your name? And that looks not too bad. And there should be no space after the for. What? Oh, yeah, so no, no space there. So let's mark that and let's see how we go. All tests passed. Awesome. So that was just looping over for each character in name. And the trick there was to make sure that you converted it to upper. So you've got to pay attention to what the output's saying. All right, so looping a set number of times. So, um, so if we know we need to do something three times, we can say for i in range. Now, where we say i, that's often short for index or integer index or whatever you want to call it. But it's quite often to see i or x or y, i or j. Um, to, for these sorts of things. So if we want to change that, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now, 4, 3, oh, but it starts with 0, remember, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's four elements. Remember, it goes up to the amount minus 1 because you're counting 0 as well. So that's a really important thing to remember about loops. Um, we can also, for n number in range 5 to 8, now remembering it does it minus 1, so 5, 6, 7, not 5, 6, 7, 8. If we wanted to include 8, we'd have to go to number 9. So it's less than the end value. Really important. You can also add a third argument, which is our step. So if we want to count in twos, uh, run that. Two, four, six, eight. All right, what about if we want to run in threes? And it goes less than that one, So and it goes from our value. So back here, in English, this means print the number from 2 up to, but not including 12, in steps of 2. You can count in negative numbers, and one loop, um, I'll see if it does it, looping backwards here. So we can count backwards by passing a negative value. So here we go 5 to 0, so that's the bigger, that's the start, the finish, and how much we're changing by. So let's have a look at that, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So if we want to actually go to 0, we have to go minus 1 here. So it's the same thing, so there, we're going to 0. Um, range will ignore it when it doesn't make sense, so it does nothing, because it's just like going, what, are you crazy? Um, so that's just nonsense. How do you count from 12 to 3? We'd actually have to put in a minus value. 
So there you go. And our last one is saying, this is a classic problem, given a single line of input containing an integer, print an upside down triangle of lowercase x's of that size. The program should look like this. So the number you read in will never be negative. Well, that's a good thing. So we can input an integer, lines equals, how many lines are we gonna do? And it's gonna be an integer, that's an input, and it's number of lines. A space after a colon, and we need two brackets there because we've got integer, so it's that function and that function. So, and from there, it's really easy. We just go for x's in range, and we're going lines. We're going to, we're not going to zero, we're going to stop at one, so it's zero, and it's minus one, so we're just looping backwards. And then we're just going to print an x. Remember the hint down here, multiplication of strings times. What? We're not going to use lines, we're actually going to use the value of x. Now that might be a bit confusing, so I might say for number of x's. So number of x's. No, that doesn't make it. No. You'll see how it works. So let's go number of lines, 5. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That looks all right. What about 7? Oh, that works. And what about 2? That looks pretty good. Does it work? Oh, yep. Oh, I tested it at 100. There you go. So I'm doing well. So, <coughs> ah, very important. As we write longer and more complex code, we're going to start to comment. Python, you can put the hash sign, so that's just the uh, shift three, and that essentially says shift three, ignore what is written on this line. Okay, so you can write whatever you want there. Generally, you would write um, a comment to indicate what you're doing in a block of code, or to explain something, or to leave yourself little notes about stuff you might put a date where you're up to, or something like that. I'll try and remember to use comments as I go through this. Like for tri trivial programs like these, you often don't need them, but as we get bigger and bigger, we'll do it. Oh, okay. So earlier on, writing um, writing turtle programs, right? what's this, let's draw a square. Ooh -ha. So we drew it, but have a look at this. That's the square. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. If we use a loop, we can do one, two, three lines. Really nice. So, and the code is for i in range four, forward 50, right 90. So it's really, really easy to do that. So repeating shapes, mountains, how many mountains? And then we're gonna turn left, and for i in mountain range, forward right, forward left. So let's look at what this does. How many mountains? Five. So it's just gonna draw uniform little mountains like that. That's pretty cool. So, um, yeah. Um, next one is pen up, pen down. So pen up, pen down. So we can do this. This we can start doing moving around and not drawing. Okay. Build the whole fence. It will take forty planks of wood, but you don't have that many. Write a program to see how much fence you can build with the planks you have. How many planks? All right. So your program should start off by moving the turtle two hundred steps to the left. So it starts at the edge of the left edge of the screen. Program should work for any number of planks up to forty planks. Important things to note. All lines are in the pen color brown, yeah. And each plank should be 100 steps high, 100 steps, 10 steps wide. The top of the fence should be the center of the space. Okay, so let's have a look at that again. So um, can we repeat it? So it goes across, turns, goes right down, like that. Okay, so what's the first thing? Um, import, so from turtle, import everything. Okay, so number of planks so this is an integer it's input and it's how many how many planks and oh, guess what i've done i forgot the second bracket so we go pen up so that's so we can move um what does it say or um, brown so pen pen color is brown and we're just going to move remember we can just go we're there we don't have to turn we can actually use back word 200 we're given that so that if i run that that how many planks 10 that see it moves our turtle away so that's awesome so this is we testing as well <coughs> okay so now we can put our pen down which is a function <coughs> okay so we want to loop over something for however many planks we've got. So, for plank in range, we're gonna use number of planks. And then, I'm not gonna go 
forward, right, forward, right, forward, right. I'm actually going to, actually, there we go, side length equals 100. Uh, or I should say fence and fence width equals 10. Now, so we know those values, we've been given those. So for side in two, in range two, because we're going to do something twice. Yeah, I'm going to repeat something twice. I'm going to go and move forward by fence width, and then I'm going to turn right by 90. Then I'm going to move forward by fence length, and then right 90. So we're going to do that twice, and then when we finish that, we're going to have to move forward by our fence width because we're going to we're going to end up we're going to go boom 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 that's four we're going to end up there so and we turn right again and then we're going to move to there and then we're going to repeat that so we've imported turtle we've got a number of planks and we've got that many planks and we've got pen up set the pen colored round we've moved backwards across there we've put the pen down set some variables we could actually probably set them right at the top um, probably, yeah doesn't matter where you do those but keep your variables sort of organized a bit and then for Plank in range, number of planks, we've just drawn the planks. Okay, so let's have a look. Oh, fence width, what have I done? I have forward, I have misspelled. And you know what have I done? Indentation error, okay, so I've got it, I'm indent. So I should, yeah, read the error. 22, how many planks? 22. Fence length, yeah, that's my spelling typo. You're all going, hey, Idiot, I saw you do that before, and I'm like going, dudes, it's a video, I can't hear you, so you've been yelling at me for nothing. So there you go, one. Boom, nice. Let's run it again with 10. And that looks pretty close to what we want. Come on, come on, come on. Yep. Turtle needs to move a bit faster, but turtles are slow. Someone should rewrite this and call it hair graphics and have a something that goes really quick. So it's marking it, all tests passed, awesome. So I've got a couple more minutes to get through a couple of these. Angles, when they meet, all the angles add up to 360, five times 72 is 360. So he, what's the turtle doing? It's just doing a full circle. Um, read through that, make sure you understand that. Um, sharing a pizza, slices, how many slices, draw the cuts, so this is pretty cool. How many slices, it's eight. All right. Okay, so let's have a look at our last one. We've got to draw this. So I'm actually going to have a pause and I'll come back to this afterwards because I will. Okay, here we are. We're going to look at the starburst square, um, which should be the final section of this. So we're going to look at inputting an integer. So input an integer. And um, we're, then we're going to um, number of squares. So we know the number of each side of the square should be 80, so side equals 80. What else do we know? The center of the starburst should be in the center of the turtle space, so we don't have to move. We know that the um, the two sides that touch the center should be purple, so um, perf equals purple, and uh, blue equals blue. So I'm just doing that so I can use them as variables rather than as strings. Um, just um, pen and Pen. I'll just do that. So I've got pen purple, pen blue. Um, we need to calculate the angle, and um, like we can calculate the angle based on like here. So it's the 360 divided by the number of slices. So we've done that before. So we can say something like angle equals 360 divided by, and I'm just going to put um, number of squares equals int input. How many squares? Uh, question mark space. Close that up. Close that up. And then we've got a variable here, so that'll give us the angle. Um, so what else do we need to do? Um, so we're going to set. Um, so pen purple. I'm going to call inner. So inner ones, and we're going to call this outer. 
Um, so let's have a look. For square in range, um, number of squares, so that's how many squares we're going to do. Okay, so then um, I'm going to loop through this. I'm going to do two sides at a time. So I'm going to say for side count, um, uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let me think, just thinking, I'm going to count the sides. Um, side count equals zero. So I'm going to go side, um, for side in. I'm going to do half square time, range two. Side count plus equals one. Um, and that's the same. I'll just put a comment. That's the same as saying side count equals side count plus one. Um, so that's, that's just a shorthand way of saying that. So that's exactly the same. If, um, if side count is greater than... Uh, three, I'm just resetting that to zero. Um, if side count equals zero or side count equals two, so zero, hold that one. So I'm going to say um, inner color equals color one equals outer. else. This is not the best way to do it, but I'm pretty sure it'll work. So we're just changing the pen colors there. Um, and so we're lined up there, so we'll go. Pen, pen color is color one, so we start off with color one. Four word is side, yeah. left 90. Pen color color uh, two. Notice like American spelling of color. Forward by side and left by ninety. And right at the end, we want to go form. So after we've drawn the square, so right at the end here, so we want to line up. We want to go left by angle. So let's have a look at that number of squares. So we're inputting a string, converting it to an integer, putting it into a value number of squares. We know the sides are 80, and we know that the inner lines are purple, the outer lines are blue, and then we calculate the angle, and that's just 360 degrees by the number of squares, and that should give us the angle that we need to turn. Now, I've decided that I'm going to do half at a time, so I need to track side, side count. There's other ways to do it, but we haven't looked at um, modulizing things like that. So we're just saying for half a square, we're going to do that twice. So and we're counting the sides, and if it's a... Um, if we're going too high, like so if one, two, it comes through here, it's three, you're going to say reset it back to zero. So we're only counting one and two. Um, yeah, no, no, that should be all right. Um, if side count is equal to zero and one, we do, or zero two, if it's anything else, we do that. Then, so that's setting, that's just setting up the pen colors. And then we go pen color one, forward, so we're doing pen color one, and then we're turning forward, pen color two, and then we're doing that all over again. So boom, boom, so I'll do four times. Let's have a look. Run. This is going to work. Run your code. Why is it taking so? Why is it slow? Come on. Let's have a look at the turtle. Oh, how many squares? Five. Um, pen color. So that needs to be what? Uh, name error. Pen color is not defined because guess what I didn't do. Wrong. Turtle. Import everything. So how many of you watching this actually went? Hey, you're crazy. You're not going to work because you didn't import anything for turtle. So let's have a look at it again. How many squares? Five. And I, what is that doing? That's just do 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 do. Uh, for square and range number of squares, for side, do that. Else, pen color, forward by side. So why is that just turning? That is weird. Okay, so let's just fix this up a bit. Side length. Um, just changing a variable name. Um, and I'm just going to change this just to keep it consistent. Um, color. Color one. Color one. Just quickly copy and paste them. Color two. Color two. Color two. And let's run. And how many squares? Five. And let's have a look at that. One, two, three, four, five. Done. Looks not too bad. 
So let's mark that and submit. Now there are much more efficient ways to do that, um, and later on um, we'll cover the um, the logic behind doing it more efficiently. But at the moment, that's a reasonable way to do it. All right, we've passed the halfway mark, so that's pretty cool. And next we're looking at loops. So um, okay, so we're going to repeat ourselves again. So there's two kinds of loops. So I'll leave you now, and I'll um, get back to 